Welcome back. There's a lot of new ideas out there to try and help Alaskans deal with energy costs, things like wind and running water. In a story you'll only see on CBS 11, Matt Felling travels down to Seward to see a project that would use icy water to keep buildings warm for less. There are two key concerns that most Alaskans deal with on a daily basis, climate change and heating costs. But there's a new project going on down in Seward that's looking to get the ball rolling to find a solution to both of them at once. Some people look at the winter waters of Resurrection Bay and think, brr. But energy engineers look and see a heat source. If you have an ice-free bay like Resurrection Bay in Seward, what you have is uh, a body of water that has collected enough solar energy from the summer and that it's hanging on to it all through the winter. So as an alternative, Andy Baker is working with the directors at the Seward Sea Life Center to give them a cheaper and more efficient heating system through a heating pump. There's always above freezing water available to us. and We bring that into the building through a standard heat pump process, through a glycol loop. We add one unit of energy, and for that we get three units of heat back out of the process. Of course, the Sea Life Center does have a built-in advantage. Most buildings don't pump thousands of gallons of water through their building. Here at the Sea Life Center, we have a terrific infrastructure in place already. I mean, most people who would look to install this kind of system don't have a huge uh, water circulation system in place already. And instead of using heating oil to keep the building and sidewalks warm, their new plan would cut that amount by combining water with electric heat. They're burning about 500 gallons a day of heating oil. With the seawater heat pump, they're shifting the uh, heating load onto uh, electricity for the heat pump. Um, that's about a third of the energy they need to make heat. And the other two thirds, is they're borrowing from the ocean. And beyond the cost savings, they're also going to cut back their carbon dioxide emissions. We certainly save 57,000 gallons of fuel, which is equivalent to 1.2 million pounds of carbon dioxide that we won't be emitting into the atmosphere. The people at the Sea Life Center couldn't apply for stimulus money since it prohibits money to aquariums, zoos, and casinos. But they have been able to get grants from the state for it because of the long-term benefits. With two heat pumps, they were looking at a ten and a half year payback without any grant funds. So when you add the grant funds, they have a net positive cash flow from the first day that they'll start up the system. And the people at the Sea Life Center don't want to stop just there. They say the technology heats parts of Stockholm, Vancouver, and they think downtown Seward could do it too. I think for Seward it has potential for providing district heating, heating much areas of the community, residential heating, commercial heating to build to businesses, because we have a very large supply of heat. And, and, uh, and I think it could be a very attractive thing for Seward, maybe for other communities as well. As of now, the Sea Life Center has secured grant funds to give them one such pump. But they're looking forward to putting in another petition and maybe getting a second one to take costs down even further. As a matter of fact, they're such believers in the cause that if everything goes through, they're planning to build an exhibit to the heating pump later this year. Matt Felling, CBS 11 News.